Uh, this building was also shown on TV many times. I've seen this uh, several, several locations. This building was mentioned. Uh, at the time, you know, when I saw it, I think it was yesterday or the day before, they were uh, trying to uh, rescue people. There were reports that maybe up to 50 people were still trapped, and hopefully they will be able to, uh, to reach them and uh, save their lives. But uh, when you look at the building like this, which is 13 story high, and uh, it has collapsed, and you hear the story that Juan just said, you can put the two things together and see that tall buildings that have not been properly designed because they, the motion of this building was up higher than the design spectra that induced uh, uh, failure. Now, what could have really happened? Maybe uh, there is a soil failure overturning here. I'm not sure, probably the, uh, the foundation is on the other side. I'm not sure exactly which, which one is the top, which one is the bottom. But in any way, the, way, the fact that you, know, this, you see that the building here does not, I, I didn't see any cracks here. And on TV, I was trying to be very, very careful and see if there's any cracks on the sheer wall. And there were, there were not. So it's probably a uh, fo soil failure that led to this uh, situation due to the very high intense uh, vibration coupled with the uh, flexibility of the building, which is a high soil uh, structure. Some other pictures, you know, from the, uh, from the damage. This is in Concepcion, this is by the, by the shore. And you can take a, I'm speculating that this is due to the, uh, to the wave that came and washed ashore. This is a parking uh, garage in Concepcion. This is Talca, this is between Santiago and uh, Concepcion in between. So it's a heavy uh, masonry structure, old structure. They don't build this kind of structures anymore, I believe, over there, uh, due to the very, very high st stringent uh, code. I spoke with Sergio and I asked him, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, what, what do you have to go through before building a home? And he said, well, uh, you have to have architectural drawings. You have to have a, the architectural drawings have to be also uh, accompanied with the calculation by an engineer. And during construction, there is also checking. They will be checking the construction. So obviously, they have really learned a lot from past earthquakes. They are doing a very, very good job. Another building, destroyed building in Talca, seems to be uh, old building, masonry. This is in uh, Tacajuana South. This is a collapse of a bridge. You can see the pier. This pier masonry that collapsed. This is the uh, tsunami effect. Again, same thing. A church. Now, by just looking at these uh, pictures, the most likely damage that we can, at this point, say would happen to all buildings of masonry and adobe, such as churches, uh, improperly repaired buildings from previous events. This is something that uh, I'm going to next slide. I'm going to talk about that later on. Uh, High-rise buildings and their contents. Uh, I'm talking about high uh, their content because. Probably buildings you know, will do well, modern buildings will do well, but contents will, will suffer damage. And uh, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, bridges, properties in the low coast, coastline will be affected by the tsunami wave, and so on. So that's just like summary of some of the damage that uh, we think you know, would uh, occur. Uh, this is slide just to remind you of the uh, uh, Equicat cat watches that have been posted. Uh, the first one, you know, was posted the same day of the event in the afternoon. I think it was uh, probably at four o'clock, somewhere around four o'clock. And uh, the estimated uh, economic damage was we estimate this to be about fifteen to thirty billion dollars. And usually, when we provide these cat watches, we uh, provide the uh, stochastic event that would most likely uh, represent the uh, earthquake. 
the, uh, this uh, was updated yesterday. There was an update. Uh, in terms of economic damage, we're still maintaining the values at about 15, lost to, to 15 to uh, 30 billion dollars. And we're giving an estimate for the uh, insured losses to be ranging between three and eight uh, billion. Obviously, as we're collecting more data and we information becomes more available, these numbers, you know, would, uh, would be uh, uh, reviewed. Now, uh, it just happened that uh, EQE, which is the company that uh, we used to be called EQE before, prior to being Equicat, and uh, then being acquired by ABS Consulting. So EQE, uh, we used to do a lot of investigation of earthquakes. We did a lot of work you know, throughout the world, about 90 earthquakes have been investigated, and not only for residential, but also for power, uh, for in commercial industrial uh, facilities. So uh, it happened that we, we went there, the uh, March 3rd, 1985. We did go over there, we had uh, some reports, and you can see also uh, from this picture, this building is tilting a little bit and uh, tells you a little bit of the extent. Now, uh, from that report, the summary that we had is pretty much now what we have seen today. And uh, for residential structures, uh, most modern buildings performed well Poor concrete joint, most commonly, most common construction deficiency. This is, you know, when you put uh, concrete on top of concrete, layer after layer. Sometimes, you know, you don't do the joint there to bond is not very well done. Poor con construction quality, which would have been cut had supervision been, uh, been there. If uh, an inspector was there, he would have caught this problem, such problems. Uh, severe damage with uh, superficial plaster repair following the 65 and 71 events. So any damage that was not properly fixed will reopen. The injury will reopen later on if such an earthquake were to recur. And, uh, and there was a few significant damage to wood frame structures. Now, in terms of uh, major industrial facilities, uh, the, good, the good news is they were built. Uh, the st design standard was very, very well, very high. In some cases, they were, the report was saying better than California. And uh, overall, the performance was good. There were some, uh, uh, not only in terms of structure, but also in terms of equipment, they were very well anchored. Uh, problems happened in uh, vertical storage tanks. About 10 to 15% of them failed. Uh, I don't recall exactly the area, but uh, in one of the uh, region, the main region of the, uh, the earthquake. Uh, other problems, you know, obviously the ground failures led to damage uh, were very common in industrial facilities. This type of damages would definitely uh, increase the business interruption loss in, uh, in case of industrial facilities. Now that's about all we have to tell you today and uh, we look forward to bringing you more information as uh, we learn more. Thank you very much.